Hey everyone, real quick, before the video begins, I wanna give my apologies because um, there were some background noises that I noticed after filming, such as sirens and birds chirping, so on and so forth. Usually my videos are pretty uh, quiet and to the point, and you only hear me, but um, today that just wasn't the case. Uh, I just obviously did not prepare for a proper setting. So again, I apologize. I hope you enjoyed the message, and I pray that it blesses you. God bless. Our bodies... Do people truly realize how important they are to God? Let's talk about it. Hey everybody out there, welcome back to the channel, Biblical Truth Central, Brother D coming at you all with yet another video. Interesting topic we're going to talk about today. Let's talk about the body, the significance of the body. Now, I don't know about you, but I myself view my body as something sacred. I view my body as something that is important. And I do what I possibly can to take care of my body. Um, me being in the health and fitness industry, I preach and teach this on a daily basis that we should take care of our bodies because they'll take care of us, amen? What we put inside of our bodies as far as food, water, what we do with our bodies as far as physical activity, good for the lungs, good for our heart health, so on and so forth. You just feel overall better when you take good care of your body. You ever heard of the saying, when you don't use it, you lose it? It's pretty much the truth when you sit down and you're sedentary and you put a bunch of unhealthy things into your body. You, you're you're going to begin to feel bad. You're going to begin to feel the lingering effects of poor nutrition and a sedentary lifestyle. So the body needs a lot of love. It does. It needs a lot of love. And sadly, in this in this life, people are on both ends of the spectrum. You have people who respect their bodies and they take care of their bodies. And then you have people who abuse their bodies and who don't use their bodies in a in a positive way. You know, so what I wanted to do was, you know, dive into the scriptures here and talk about the significance of of our bodies and the Lord. You know, to a saved person, the body is the home of God. There is no question about it. This is where the Lord dwells. His Holy Spirit dwells within us to govern us through this life, to give us discernment in this life, to help guide us down the paths in which we are going to go, which are inevitable in this life. Amen. So I have scriptures in front of me. I'm, I've came prepared. We got the Bible right here. Um, it's Sunday morning. It's Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day to all of my mothers out there. God bless you. I pray that the Lord is taking care of you. I hope your children are being a blessing to you today, whether they're young, or whether they're older. It doesn't matter. Uh, you are appreciated. And God bless you. So let's go right ahead and get into this, this awesome study. So I'm going to start reading out of the book of Acts. And if you would, go ahead and um, grab your Bible. If you want, grab a notebook and a pen. Take some notes. Uh, perhaps you may learn something from this today. And it'll make you think and to see things from a different perspective. Okay? I'm going to start reading out of Acts chapter 7. Verses 44 through 50. And in these verses here, we're talking about God's true tabernacle. Tabernacle is just another word for temple or home, okay? Acts 7, 44 says, Our fathers had the tabernacle of the witness in the wilderness, as he appointed, instructing Moses to make according to the pattern that he had seen which our fathers, having received it in turn, also brought with Joshua into the land possessed by the Gentiles, whom God drove out before the face of our fathers until the day of David. 
who found favor before God and asked to find a dwelling for the God of Jacob. But Solomon built him a house, a physical house that is. But we know that that's not going to cut it for the Lord. Let's keep going. Verse 48. However, the Most High does not dwell in temples made with hands, as the prophets say. Stop right here. Scripture here is telling us that God does not dwell in four walls. He doesn't dwell in a building, in a house, in a temple made with human hands. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob would never dwell somewhere where his creation created. He is only going to dwell where he had a part in creating. Amen. Verse 49 says, heaven is my throne and earth is my footstool. What house will you build for me? This is the Lord speaking. Or what is the place of my rest? Has my hand not made all things? Has my hand not made all things? I think this is clear that the Lord dwells in a temple that he created because God created all things, correct? He created the earth. He created the sun, the moon, the stars, humans. The Bible says that we are made in the likeness of God and God's image, that we are his greatest creation. And it only makes sense that his Holy Spirit wants to dwell within his greatest creation, that being the human body, which is the most unique thing ever created. There's so many questions about the human body. There's so much research that is still being done to this day on the human body that man still cannot answer all questions when it comes to the human body. Man will never be able to answer all questions when it comes to the human body because man is not the creator of the human body. That glory goes to God Almighty. Now let's go to 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 5. And it says, you yourself, like a living stone, are being built as a spiritual house. Peter says, you, you yourself are like spiritual stones, living stones built up to become a spiritual house. God is taking living stones, building his temple himself, which he already did when he created Adam. And then the generations and the generations that followed, he who has the Holy Spirit within him is a spiritual house. Finishing up the verse, to be a priesthood to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. Before I go to the next scripture, when we come to the Lord and we get saved and we receive Christ as our Savior and we are gifted with the Holy Spirit, let us understand that we no longer belong to ourselves. Our body does not belong to us anymore. Our body has a job to do, and that is to serve God. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. For the wages of sin is death, but we know that Christ paid for sins on the cross. So since he has paid for our sins, he owns us, correct? He owns us. Don't, 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 don't make a mistake as far as thinking that 
God is some dictator because the Lord is not a dictator and the Lord is not going to force you even after you're saved to do anything. But it should be in us. His Holy Spirit should be in us to want to please the Father with our actions that we perform with our body. Amen. Romans 12, chapter 1 says, I appeal to you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice. Present your bodies as a living, living sacrifice. To be holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. What we say, how we say it, what we do, where we go, how we carry our lives, all of those different type of things should be an honor unto the Lord as a spiritual sacrifice. Living this life on earth is not easy. Dealing with the day-to-day -day temptations and the day-to-day -day issues in which come our way, it takes a lot to get us to stay on the straight and narrow. You know, when Job went through all of his storms, he was a man that the Lord found righteous. And Satan told God, you know, the only reason Job loves you and because he serves you is because you bless him all the time. And if anything would have happened to him, he would curse you. And God wanted to prove Satan wrong. So he allowed things to happen to Job. Job lost a lot of things. He lost everything. And his wife was like, curse God. You still are going to worship the Lord? Even though all of this is gone, you, you've gone through hell and back. And Job not once cursed him. He still chose to honor the Lord. He still chose to worship God. He did not go out committing crimes. He did not go out defiling his body. He still honored the Lord with his words and with his body. He still decided to do that regardless of what, what he went through. Amen? So, we need to be doing the same thing. Honoring God no matter what with our words and with our body. Now, in the beginning of this video, I said, you know, you have people who care for their bodies, who take care of their bodies, and then you have people who abuse their bodies. You know, let's look at an example of what it means to abuse, you know, your body. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 15 through 16 says, Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ. Members of Christ. Let's just meditate on that for a minute. Your body, every part of you, no matter what it is, is a member of Christ. Shall I then take the members of Christ and make them members of a prostitute? Never. He who joins to a prostitute becomes one flesh with her. Now, I know that sounds pretty deep and it really is pretty deep, but the significance of this had to be put in a perspective to make somebody say, absolutely not. A prostitute? Are you serious? I mean, let's take a moment to think, well, what is a prostitute? A prostitute is a male or a female who uses their body, the temple of God, in an immoral fashion. They have given up the sanctuary of their bodies. They've given up the purity of their bodies for vain gain, we'll say for earning dirty money. It is one of the worst things that a person can do 
to themselves, is prostitute themselves, give themselves over to just anybody, completely disrespecting the intent for sexual activity just for money or even drugs. And to say that, are you going to join your body with a prostitute is, is, is something serious. That's some pretty deep stuff. Amen. First Corinthians chapter three, verse 16. It says, do you not know that you are the temple of God and that the spirit of God dwells in you? If anyone, underline this word, folks, defiles the temple of God, God will destroy him. God will destroy him. You know, the Lord has the right to take any one out of the world in which he desires to take out. If a person is just constantly abusing their body, constantly not showing appreciation to this unique specimen here, constantly spitting on the creation of God and ruining his home. Do you not believe that God has the right to take that person out? It's something to think about, folks. It really is. For the temple of God is holy, which the temple you are. Holy. That word means to be set apart. It means to do the complete opposite of what other people do. If you see people going left, you need to go right. If you see people doing wrong, you need to do right. If you see people walking in darkness, you need to walk in the light. You know what I'm saying? We need to keep God's temple holy. I told everybody to underline the word defile. So let's talk about what that means. The definition of defile, according to the Webster's Dictionary, is to make unclean or impure. To corrupt the purity or perfection of. To violate the chastity of virginity. To make physically unclean. Especially with something unpleasant or contaminated. So defiling is definitely something serious in the eyes of God. You know, Jesus said it best. It's not what goes in the body that defiles the body. It's what comes out of the body that defiles the body. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 18 tells us how people tend to defile the holy temple of God. Flee from sexual immorality. Every other sin a person commits is outside the body. Let's stop right here. Every other sin that a person commits is outside the body. When you shoot somebody, you've caused bodily harm. That's a sin. You're hurting your brother outside the body. If they've died and you committed murder, that's outside the body. If you've told a lie and it's affected someone's life, that's outside the body. You know, if you've taken something that doesn't belong to you, that is a sin outside of the body. Now let's finish it. But the sexual and moral person sins against his own body. When a person commits fornication, which is sex outside of marriage, you are sinning with your body. The Bible says that sexual sin is pretty much at the top of the list when it comes to defiling the body. This is why it says at the beginning of the verse to flee 
from sexual immorality. This is why the Bible talks so much about sexual sins. We live in a world that is absolutely crazy about sex. They're crazy about it. They talk about it everywhere we go, but they don't understand that committing fornication, you're dirtying up the temple of God. You're sinning against yourself and you do the body a disservice. You do the house of God a disservice. And I want us all to think about that today. You know, our bodies are, are a beautiful creation from God and we should be honoring the Lord with our bodies. We shouldn't be doing things that cause our bodies harm. We should be taking care of, of, of the Lord's house. Just think about this for a second. What if somebody came into your house, right? And they just started messing things up, like turning over tables, dropping dishes, um, putting their dirty clothes all over the place, just ruining things. You're going to want to kick them out. You're going to want to take them out. You're not going to want them anything to do with them, right? That's just from a human perspective. But if we go back to 1 Corinthians 3, 16, it says, if anyone defiles the temple of God, God will destroy him. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't I don't think I would want to take that risk of being destroyed by the Lord because I'm not honoring my body. You know, I'm not you know, there are several ways that we can destroy our bodies. It's not just sexual sin. People who who take drugs, you know, you're basically destroying your body. People who abuse bad nutritional habits, you're abusing your body. Uh, people who get tattoos, you're abusing your body. And yes, I too have tattoos. I've made those mistakes when I was in the world. And I repented of those. And I'll never do that again. Because I want to honor God with my body. I want to honor him with my actions. I want to honor him with my life. If you're in Christ and you want to do the best that you possibly can do for God, you should want to honor him. You should want to be that living sacrifice like the book of Romans tells us, Romans 12, 1. You should want to be that living sacrifice. The Bible says that we are the light of the world, the salt of the earth, that we need to be living examples so that we can give people hope and bring people to salvation through Christ. The body is the temple of God. It is our vehicle on this earth. Let us honor it the best way that we possibly can in the name of Jesus. I hope this little study here has made you think about how you treat your body, made you think about how significant your body is, made you think about how much God cares about your body. Because it is his home to the saved. Um, be sure to like this video. I pray to conversate with some of you in the comment section. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing. I'll see you all in the next video.